The 2014 Royal Rumble draws closer by the day, and I don't know about you, but as it gets closer, I start to get more and more excited about it. The Royal Rumble, to me, always traditionally represents that beginning on the road to WrestleMania. It really begins to set the table for WrestleMania, and in and of itself is the most unique pay-per-view concept I feel that the WWE has today, the most unique pay-per-view concept match, and always, to me, has been a personal favorite of mine, in some cases even more so than WrestleMania. And that's why you find, whereas if most WWE fans only buy one pay-per-view the entire year, it's WrestleMania. If there's a second one that they usually do buy, it ends up being the Royal Rumble because it's a unique event, and it does ultimately set that table heading towards WrestleMania. So I thought it would be interesting today to sit down and talk about some possibilities of who should win the 2014 Royal Rumble. The first name I'm going to throw out there, there's going to be a total of four that I'm going to discuss here, is CM Punk. Now CM Punk, beyond question, has become a top guy in the WWE over the past couple of years, and he's one of those almost unanimous baby faces, something that the WWE had sorely been lacking for several years with guys like Cena and Orton. No matter what type of propaganda the WWE tries to give you, they weren't being almost unanimously cheered by the live event audience, and still aren't. And still aren't getting the proper reaction. Even Orton as a heel gets some cheers and he gets some boos, so he's not getting the proper heel reaction. Cena gets his boos and gets his cheers. Again, not a great babyface reaction, not a reaction you want for one of your heroes. Well, CM Punk doesn't really have to worry about that. He gets nice reactions. He gets big reactions. Not the biggest reactions in the company anymore. That has gone to somebody else similar to him. But CM Punk is still a big guy in terms of being a big name in that company. He's a top guy. He's one of the biggest stars that they have. And there definitely could be an argument to be made for him winning the 2014 Royal Rumble. I don't want to see happen to CM Punk what has maybe happened to a guy like, let's say, Chris Jericho, where they kind of slip through the cracks and somehow, some ways, it always comes up with somebody else should win, somebody else deserved to win, somebody else was better suited to win, the story made sense for somebody else to win, and then you look back five or ten years later and CM Punk has never still won a Royal Rumble. I still feel like he should have run, won the 2012 Royal Rumble. That should have been his event, that should have been the Rumble for him to win. But hey, it is what it is. Can't really do much about that. But when you look at CM Punk and the actions that have happened over the past couple of months with him and now with the animosity that's developing between himself and Triple H, you know, even with the little stuff with Shawn Michaels and now the New Age Outlaws turning on him, a lot of people will point to it and assume that that means that CM Punk is going to wrestle Triple H at WrestleMania. And at this point in time, that would be my assumption too. However, you could make a very strong argument that since it seems like Triple H has kind of put his semi-stamp of approval, his little God praise on Brock Lesnar, you could have CM Punk win the Royal Rumble. You could have Brock Lesnar win the belt at Elimination Chamber and then have CM Punk and Brock Lesnar in a match at WrestleMania 30 in the main event for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. This is a chance for CM Punk to try and get his revenge on Brock Lesnar. It makes sense for Brock Lesnar maybe to carry a belt into that particular show and then drop it there to Punk. And since he's kind of aligned with Triple H, that could make some sense. You could even have Triple H try and intervene, try to be a special guest referee, all types of different things. So you could definitely make a storyline argument for it happening. But I don't think the timing is right, unfortunately, and I don't think he's the best choice for this year. And I would expect Triple H is going to want to get his big mania payout. So he's going to position himself to get his own singles match. He's going to want to work against a top guy. That's Triple H's M.O. and Forte. And hey, whatever, more power to him. So henceforth, he's going to want to work with CM Punk at WrestleMania, and I doubt Punk's going to win. The next guy is going to be Roman Reigns. When you look at Roman Reigns, he's a guy that has a lot of momentum going for him right now. The crowd is really starting to get behind him, and not just get behind him, but get behind him as a babyface. They're envisioning him as a top guy. They're envisioning him as a big monster babyface hero down the road. And you could sit there and say, well... He might not be ready. He might not be ready. But it's kind of like one of those things like in the sports world where sometimes ultimately somebody's not ready until they're given the chance to find out whether or not they're ready. They're never ready until they're ready. If that makes any sense, I don't really know. But what I do know is that Roman Reigns is probably going to have a huge 2014. And when you look at him, you sit there and you wonder to yourself, if he's going to be such a big guy and he's going to be focused on so much by this company, why wait? 
Why put it off to maybe having him win a Money in the Bank ladder match? Why have him wait until SummerSlam? Why have him wait until a Survivor Series? Why have him wait till the 2015 Royal Rumble? Why not have him win the whole damn thing now? Here you're pushing a young guy to the moon. You're positioning him in a spot where he's going to main event WrestleMania 30, potentially having a chance to win the undisputed WWE World Heavyweight Championship. If that doesn't make somebody a star, I don't know what will. And that's just a flat out. Now, to me, it would make a little more storyline sense if the Shield had been more closely aligned with Randy Orton during his time as champion. And then this kind of played out like an evolution thing. Batista winning in 2005 and then choosing to go after Triple H's World Heavyweight Championship instead. That, to me, would make a little more storyline sense if they had done more with it and they had done develop more time into it and really emphasize that Reigns and Ambrose and Rollins were aligned with Orton. Then it would make more sense to me. Now you could go with the shock and awe and surprise factor of having the younger guy win the Rumble. And I'd be all for that. If any of these four guys that I mentioned actually did win the Royal Rumble, you really wouldn't hear a whole lot of complaint out of me at all. Now, to me, they are the only four real, realistic options that you have at this point if you're the WWE for having won the Rumble. But if you did go with any of these four guys, I think it would be a good booking decision. I just might think one or two others might be better booking decisions than the other. When you look at Reigns, worst case scenario to me in this Rumble, what should happen is he should go on a monster tear. Bigger than Diesel and even bigger than Kane. And yes, I mean... You know, at some point in time, records are made to be broken. Kane eliminated 11 people in the 2001 Royal Rumble. Why can't Roman Reigns eliminate 12 and then maybe have the 12th elimination be Kane? That's a way to have a guy really break a record. That's a way to have a guy put his own stamp on the event. That's a way for a guy to look like a winner, even if he doesn't actually win the match itself. You want to set Roman Reigns up on a whole different stratosphere, and you want to start a big rocket ship launch? on this guy's character in 2014, have him dominate in the Royal Rumble. Have him eliminate 12 people. Have him break Kane's record. That way he'll go down in the history books. He'll always be remembered. It'll be a match you always remember. It'll be a moment you always remember for Roman Reigns, and it'll help make him a big star. The third individual is going to be Daniel Bryan. Now, when you look at Daniel Bryan right now, beyond question, he is the hottest individual in the WWE. There is no argument that could be made otherwise. The WWE tries to sit there and still tell you that somebody like a John Cena is more over than Daniel Bryan with the live event audience. They are insulting your intelligence and you know better and shame on the WWE for really thinking that we're that stupid. We can see. We can hear. Maybe you need to see and you need to hear. Or listen, even more important. As Daniel Bryan is over like a million bucks. I talked about way back when talking about how Daniel Bryan, when he won the Money in the Bank, that it was dumb, because I agreed with it. At the, I agreed it was dumb at the time, that when they put him in the um, main event spot and had him won the World Heavyweight Championship, I thought it was dumb. They just made him another standard cookie-cutter chicken shit heel, and it was dumb. But I also said way back when that if you take him and you tear him down just a little bit and you repackage him and focus on making him more of an entertaining character in the mid-card, which is what they did with Kane, um, then... Once he got to hell no, now you were ready to really go someplace, and he caught on like a million bucks with the audience as a baby face. So with Daniel Bryan right now, if you had him win the Rumble, and you had Orton carry the belt to WrestleMania, ta-da, makes a ton of sense. Absolutely makes a ton of sense. It's hard to argue with that. I, however, do not think that that is the best option for Daniel Bryan, and I'm going to tell you why. People win belts at WrestleMania. People lose belts at WrestleMania. That's all fine and good. Daniel Bryan has been a world champion a couple of times. I wonder when I look at Daniel Bryan sometimes if he's an example of a character where the thrill of the chase is what makes him so appealing and compelling as opposed to him actually reaching the pinnacle and the summit. Now, on the flip side of that, at some point in time, you do have to have that guy reach the pinnacle and the summit, and I do agree with that. But I don't know if this is the right moment, the right time to have him reach that pinnacle, have him reach that summit. Because again, like I mentioned, you know, Miz beat John Cena in the main event of WrestleMania 27, retaining his WWE championship. What did that mean to the Miz? Look where he is three years later. You know, you could sit there and have Daniel Bryan wrestle a Triple H at WrestleMania. 
and I think it's more important and significant to his career long term, especially getting a signature victory at a big four pay-per-view, your biggest pay-per-view of the year, against one of your iconic figures in your company in Triple H, or if you have him wrestle Shawn Michaels, the same thing. This would be an example of giving him a signature victory at your biggest show of the year. He'd be wrestling Mr. WrestleMania, Shawn Michaels. That makes Daniel Bryan a big deal. That cements his spot as a top guy. Sometimes it's not a match for the belt that cements a guy's spot as a top guy. It's not that match for the belt that cements a guy as a hero, as a top babyface for the fans. But to me, in my opinion, I posed this question on Twitter. I posed a question in a previous video saying, which would you rather have Daniel Bryan do? Would you rather have him win the Rumble and then go on to win the title at WrestleMania from Orton or Cena or a Lesnar or a Batista, you know, whoever? Would you rather have him wrestle maybe a Shawn Michaels? Would you rather maybe even have him wrestle like a Triple H? Because there would be a lot of storyline sense to that happening as well. But for me, though, it's that last option that's the most appealing. It would allow him to do something that John Cena still hasn't done. It would truly cement him as a guy worthy of a top spot. It would instantly give him credibility to a whole different level. And it would make him a much bigger star than you could imagine without having to split the audience with him, except maybe for that one match or that one moment. And that, of course, I'm referring to him facing The Undertaker at WrestleMania with the streak on the line. Look. Like I said before, belts come and go. People win belts, people lose belts at WrestleMania. The one constant, the one thing that never changes is that Undertaker always wins at WrestleMania. He is 21-0. Ask Shawn Michaels how that went twice. Ask Randall or Keith Orton how that went in 2005. Ask Triple H three times. Ask CM Punk last year. To me, there is no bigger statement, no bigger match that a Daniel Bryan could have at WrestleMania 30 in 2014 than him facing The Undertaker at WrestleMania 30. If you don't like that, too fucking bad. I don't see how that's an insult. I don't see how that's a bad thing. Most of you can agree at that one specific event at WrestleMania, that Undertaker streak means more than the belt. Especially especially if Daniel Bryan maybe comes this close to winning the Rumble, but he doesn't get there. And then the night after the Rumble, or a week after the Rumble, Undertaker makes an appearance and doesn't just do anything. He sits there and chooses and selects Daniel Bryan to be his opponent. He deems him worthy of that. It's not a Triple H having to issue the challenge. It's not a Shawn Michaels having to chase after him and issue the challenge. Undertaker challenges and chases Daniel Bryan. That makes him a much bigger star than beating somebody like Randy Orton or John Cena at WrestleMania for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship could ever do. That instantly cements his place as a top guy forever. It instantly cements his place as a modern legend in the company. So, in my opinion, I wouldn't have Daniel Bryan win the Rumble, and I think he would come out better for it long term. Okay, so he has to lose at WrestleMania to The Undertaker. Does that really hurt CM Punk? Did that hurt Randy Orton? Did that hurt Batista? Did that hurt Edge? Did that hurt Triple H? Did that hurt Shawn Michaels? No, and it's ridiculous to insinuate it. It's an entirely different level when you wrestle Undertaker at WrestleMania, period. And to me, it's the most compelling option at this point in terms of a taker match at WrestleMania. For my money, the person that should win the 2014 Royal Rumble is Batista. And I know a lot of you are going to sit there and say, oh, imagine that. He favors the bigger guy over the smaller guy. What more do you fucking want? I want Daniel Bryan to wrestle The Undertaker, my favorite in the business today. The guy that I live for at WrestleMania, it's my one opportunity for a mark-out moment every year, a true 100% full-blown mark moment. I want Daniel Bryan to face him. To me, that's much more important than wrestling for the freaking WWE World Heavyweight Championship. But you're bringing in Batista. And it sounds like this is not just going to be a two- or three-month run. This could be a two- or three-year run. Batista is going to be there for a long period of time. One last final run. A guy who was a star from several years back. A guy who helped carry the company for a period of time. A guy that is a legitimate, legitimate star and a legitimate main eventer and world champion. 
You bring this guy in, his first match being the Royal Rumble, to me, you have to establish that this guy is back, and he's back in full force, and he is ready to go, and he is a force to be reckoned with for whatever time he has left in the WWE. You have to have him win the Royal Rumble. You could have him wrestle Randy Orton. And imagine that. Two former members of Evolution. That could tell a very good story. You could have Cena win the belt, head into WrestleMania, and there's freaking Batista. And now Batista is going to try and get revenge on John Cena for what happened back in 2010. Again, a lot of good story storytelling elements there. If you want to go off the reservation, off the beaten path, and go a roundabout way of doing things, and you want to have Lesnar win the freaking belt, at Elimination Chamber, and then it's Batista versus Lesnar at WrestleMania for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. To me, that's a big money match with some compelling storytelling elements as, all, as well. To me, I think it would be ridiculous and stupid, in my opinion, in this particular case, to have Batista come back at the Rumble to just have him not win the Rumble. Now, you could sit there and say, maybe he doesn't win the Rumble, but he wins the belt at the Elimination Chamber, and then he faces like a Daniel Bryan winning the Rumble at WrestleMania. And then I'm like, eh. There's not a lot of story there. To me, there's the potential for a much better story between a Daniel Bryan and Undertaker, especially if Undertaker is the one that calls him out and chooses and selects him for this honor to wrestle him at WrestleMania because Undertaker comes out and says he feels he's the best in the business, so Undertaker wants to know if he still got it, and he feels Daniel Bryan is the most worthy to try and beat the streak at WrestleMania, and he wants to see if he can measure up to the current measuring stick in WWE. And then you've got Batista coming back, and you could bring him back as a babyface, the anti-PG babyface, if you will, and have him take on Orton and beat Orton at WrestleMania and give us a new, fresh babyface in a way who we haven't seen in three and a half years in your title scene. To me, it's a win-win-win all the way around. You could have CM Punk last to the final four of the Royal Rumble and have him get eliminated maybe because Triple H and or the New Age Outlaws come out and interfere. Then you have Roman Reigns go on a big monster run, break King's record, and that is what I would do, and really cement and establish him as a future top guy. Have him enter in the top ten and just make the middle of the Rumble all about him and have him last to the final four. And then you have Daniel Bryan. And then you have Batista. And I've already talked about what I would do with them. So in my opinion, based off of the way I see things, as much as it would be great for Daniel Bryan to win the Rumble, and it would make a tremendous amount of sense on that hand because of how over he is, how much the crowd is behind him, I feel that it is best for all parties involved this time, in this point in time, in my opinion, for Batista to win the 2014 Royal Rumble. Let me know if you agree or disagree with me down below in the comments section. And, again, answer the question and really explain yourself because I love to see the responses. Do you think Daniel Bryan's best bet to be even more over, if it's possible, is to win the Rumble and win the belt at WrestleMania? Is it to wrestle Triple H at WrestleMania? Is it to wrestle Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania? Or is it to wrestle The Undertaker at WrestleMania? I'd love to see your response.